Do you realize how fast the batteries go down in these things? I am using an aftermarket battery because I'm cheap. I have one GoPro battery, which holds a charge. I have two non-GoPro batteries. They don't hold a charge so much, but boy, were they cheap. Inexpensive, I should say, or cheap interchangeably in this case. I'm still hiking. Just thought I'd check in and let you know my every beeping move. GoPro stop. Come on, stop. Stop already. God damn it, GoPro stop recording. Ahoy! The pirate has wisdom to bestow upon those who are willing to hear. Dream as if you'll live forever. Live as if you'll die today. Live your days here as if they were your last, because one day they will be. In other words, land lover, have fun! Relinquish more treasure for more wisdom from the pirate. All right, so I'm wondering if you can even tell that I'm lighting this scene. I'm just looking for a little bit of fill light. Hopefully you don't even know the light is there. But I'm gonna move it over here and just leave it on the glamour setting, the, the glow setting over here, just for fun. I wanted to explain something. The vlog so far has been a lot about exercise. But before I go any further, one, I left the radio on in the background by accident. I'm not gonna turn it off, and two, there are not one, but two houses on my street right across being torn down to the foundation as we speak. So the noise is deafening, but get used to it because it's gonna be months while they're do tearing down and rebuilding. The vlog so far has been a lot about exercise and I wanted to explain why. Uh, I live in, in Southern California half the time and Santa Fe, New Mexico half the time. When I'm in California, my life is incredibly predictable. Uh, of all the mega cities in the world, Los Angeles is my least favorite. I'm from the country, to put me in any mega city is not fair, but Los Angeles is my least favorite, and over time I've grown further away from the city itself and enjoying the city. So when I'm in California, my life is so basic and so simple. I do two things. I sit in front of my computer working for Blurb, and I have a ton of stuff going for Blurb. So on that perspective, it's good because I'm really productive when I'm here. The second thing I do is I exercise. But, but why do I exercise? You probably don't care, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. When I was younger, I was super active, grew up in the country, outside all the time, bicycles, motorcycles, fishing, hunting, sports, etc. And then in about 88 or 89, thinking I was gonna be a geology major and having a scholarship as a shotgun shooter, believe it or not, uh, I found photography and my life derailed basically. So from 89 to 2010, that's all I did. Was All I did was look at the world through a square. I did no physical activity for the most part. I was not passionate about any particular sport. I didn't do any hunting, I didn't do any fishing, nothing. I, but I was happy, I was so consumed by photography. In 2010, I got up and I was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. Photography changed, I didn't love it as much and I wanted to change my life, so I quit. And what I was looking for at the time without knowing it was balance of like, well, I don't want to stare at a camera through a camera my whole life. And what came back was exercise, climbing, cycling, hiking, fishing, yoga, paddling, etc. And it came back and I was like, this is fantastic. Then I promptly got diagnosed five years ago with Lyme disease. And for those of you who don't know about Lyme, just know that it is a hundred times worse than what you've heard. The U.S. population, I know this sounds like a conspiracy, but the U.S. population has been categorically and systematically lied to about Lyme disease since the late 60s, early 70s. The more you dive into the information, the more you cannot believe that something like this would happen and is happening in the United States. That's why I always talk about the CDC as being a cartel, because they create their own news, their own narrative, and it doesn't have anything to do with the truth in many cases. So I got this thing and I was wiped out. Uh, cognitive wise, I didn't know who I was, where I was, physically I was wasted, and I was right at that borderline of not being able to work. And luckily I was able to sort of keep it together enough to work. And that was the, first, that was the subsequent four years of my life, I was in that misery. And about a year ago, I started to sort of come out of this thing. And, uh, and that's when exercise came back. This weekend, I'm reading this book called North by Scott Jurek. I read that on Saturday. 
And uh, so he's, he's setting a speed record. He's an ultra running guru guy. I'd never heard of him, but I don't know anything about ultra running and I'm never going to do an ultra run, but I'm reading this book anyway. And he's talking about running the Appalachian Trail, setting a speed record, like 40, 2,200 miles in 40 days or some insane thing. And uh, I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty, there's a lot of things that can go wrong on a trip like that. Like, for example, get jacked by a hillbilly, like in Deliverance. Nope, he's not worried about that. How about getting mauled by a black bear? Not really worried about that. Getting lost, no. Not breaking the record, yes, that was a big deal for him, but had he not broken the record, he would still be alive, he would be fine. What is his primary concern? Ticks and Lyme disease. Uh, and yes, he gets three tick bites on the trail, and after he comes off of the trail, when he gets back to his normal life, he and his wife take antibiotics as a precautionary measure. So this Lyme disease thing is the real deal. Now that I'm feeling okay again, not normal, but okay again, I can do these things, so exercise is a huge part of my life. What I'm hoping is that, for those of you who exercise, I hope that seeing me uh, gives us solidarity or inspires you to try something new. And for those of you who are not exercising, who are maybe having a couple of drinks every night or sitting on your computer surfing the web for no apparent reason whatsoever, or even worse, you're spending time on Instagram, I hope that you see this stuff and you t delete your Instagram account, you don't go online unless you have to, and you start exercising. Because if I can do it and I can feel as good as I do now, even with the residue of lime in the back of my head every single day, then you are gonna go gangbusters. So I'm hoping that this is a little bit of an inspirational thing without sounding like a guru because I am as far away from a guru as you could possibly imagine. In fact, I saw a guy on, on his bike the other day who looked like a guru and I had this daydream of him crashing. So that is a horrible thing to admit. But he was kind of pushing his luck and I was like, dude, even if you are a guru, at some point you're gonna push your luck and you're gonna crash. So anyway, for what it's worth, get out there, set a goal, have fun. Do this if you can, and I'll see you, uh, I don't know, next time. These are the tracks of the Newport Beach Cougar. These are fresh. The Newport Beach Cougar is mid-50s, but searches for much younger prey, like mid-30s. I gotta be careful. Star eyes, that's the way you make my eyes shine When those lips of yours caress mine Just to have you by my side